Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Allah Loves. So one of the things that causes people usually to become disillusioned in their journey to Allah is when they stop trusting Allah, when they start feeling like things are out of control in their lives, that they did the dua part, they did the tawbah part, everything that we've mentioned in the first few episodes. I did my supplications, I did my repentance, I sought closeness to Allah, but things are not going right. And because things are not going right, I'm starting to question the substance of that dua, I'm starting to question whether or not my tawbah was even accepted, my repentance was even accepted, and all of that serves as a major hindrance between me and Allah. Uh, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that whoever establishes their belief in divine decree, like truly has a great sense of qadr, of understanding that Allah is always in charge, establishes their tawheed, establishes their monotheism, and whoever has that in shambles, then their entire premise for accepting a creator, their entire premise for Tawheed is going to be shaky and faulty. And so it's important for us to solidify that as much as we can. Now I'm not going to talk about why bad things happen to good people and the question of evil now. You can find plenty of resources that we have at Yaqeen and uh, other lectures inshallah ta'ala on that subject. But I want to talk about Tawakkul in the capacity of the love of Allah now. Allah mentions in Allah yuhibbul mutawakkirin that Allah loves those that put their trust in him. Why does Allah love those that put their trust in him? What are the implications of that and what does that station look like? For the first thing, it's in the same capacity as in Allah yuhibbu and yus'al. Allah loves to be asked. So putting your trust in him means that you are expressing your love for him and you are expressing your desire to be nourished and sustained by him. And you're expressing, you know, you don't make dua unless there's a reason for you making that dua. So when you put your trust in him, you are acknowledging his power. You're acknowledging his attributes in the capacity. So Allah loves that you put your trust in him. The second part of that is that Allah removes distractions from him in the process. You see, if you're constantly feeling like things are out of control and you have to get this right and you have to get this right and everything is falling apart, then you're going to not have the ability to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll always have a sense of disturbance because things are not going the way that you feel like they should be going for you. That doesn't mean that you should be lazy and say, I love Allah and I have trust. No, that means that as things are unfolding in your life around you, you're able to still maintain perspective and see Allah through all of that and put your trust in Him. The third part of that is the station of being a mutawakkil, the station of being someone who has that trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and longing, longing for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hereafter. You see, if you think that God is punishing you in this life and that you're living in perpetual punishment, then it's very hard for you to believe in a place of perpetual reward. So tawakkul here allows you to have a sense of tranquility and in this life and a sense of longing in the hereafter. Ibn al-Qayyim summarizes this very beautifully. He says that there are three ways to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, three levels. He says the first level of trust of Allah is the way that one of you would trust an agent, that you would trust a wakil. When you trust an agent, then that agent is still in service to you. You're not in service to the agent, and so you give the agent instructions, and when the agent doesn't do exactly as you tell the agent to do, then you're going to lose trust in that agent. You're going to try to replace that agent. Allah is not going to be that type of a wakil for you. You have to move it up. So he said the second type of trust is the type of trust that a child has for the mother. Now, a child goes to the mother when the mother inflicts uh, reward or punishment because the child knows that there is no one that loves it more than the mother and no one that can offer it a greater sense of comfort than the mother. So even if the mother punishes the child, the child cries and flings their arms up in the air and goes back to the mother for comfort because the child trusts the love of the mother and that the mother has their best interest at heart even when the mother punishes them. And the third one he said is to trust Allah the way that a person who is being washed when they are dead, a person who is being washed would trust their washer. Complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not move you in a direction out of hatred or in a way that's not in your best interest. Complete trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will maintain your affairs. Complete trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see you through every difficulty. And that every difficulty is meant for you to gain further perspective and to gain a greater closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
on that path to his love. And so that trust, that element of trust in a relationship with Allah allows you to focus on the love. When there is mistrust, there cannot be true love. And so Allah mentions, in Allah yuhibbul mutawakkirin. Allah loves those who trust him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. See you all next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.